Good morning, everyone. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and carve open our pumpkin today. So I wanted to go ahead and get you started and show you that. So as of the last video, I went ahead and I drew um, where my lid's going to go. And I put a little tooth there uh, as a notch to know where my lid lines up. Um, I showed you guys that you could do that with a tooth or you can make a couple impressions above and below where your lid's going to be. So then I went ahead and I also sketched out the face that I'm going to cut out. Um, so we'll get started with the lid first. Cut your lid before you do the face. Um, it's just much easier that way. So when we go to cut these open, we want to use a knife um, that has a nice tip on it. Uh, if you're at home, you might have a kitchen paring knife or some sort of knife that you can use. Um, but it does need to be sharp, and if you can get an X-Acto knife, um, they work fantastic. It's a little smaller blade. You can be a little more agile or nimble with it um, in cutting out curves and different angles. Sometimes if it's a thicker, wider knife, you're not going to have the ability to do that. But what we want to do when we go ahead and cut this open is we want to put the blade in, and then we want to drag it. Don't saw with it. If you saw with it, you'll get rough, jagged cuts. If you can put it in and then just drag it, you get a nice, smoother, cleaner cut. So I'm going to start on the back here where my little notch is, and I'm going to cut around that first. So I'm just going to take the knife and I'm going to slide it in, and then I'm going to drag it. Um, make sure you insert your knife deep enough that you're cutting through the clay. Now, if you uh, were good at making your pinch pots to where they're only about a quarter of an inch thick, it shouldn't be too much of a problem cutting through the clay. But if you are a little bit lazy and you left your pinch pots real thick, you're going to need a longer blade or you're going to have to push your knife in further to ensure that you're going to be able to cut through um, the thickness of your clay. So I just cut the notch first. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the rest of the lid off. Um, when you come back around to the notch, just make sure that you pay attention to it and you don't accidentally cut it off or cut through it. So I'm going to put the blade in and then I'm just going to drag it. And as I drag it, I tend to turn the project or the pumpkin rather than pull, um, turning or moving my other hand with a knife. Um, it just seems like it gives me a little better control that way. And I go nice and slow. Um, there is newspaper inside. Sometimes the blade will catch the newspaper and you'll feel a little bit of resistance. Um, and so you just kind of got to be careful not to pull on it too hard and end up messing it up. So I'm getting back to where I started almost. I can feel it pulling the newspaper. So I'm going to take my blade out and then reinsert it. So hopefully it doesn't grab that newspaper. real close to where the notch is, so I'm trying to be careful so that I don't cut the notch off. So you should be able to go ahead and then lift it off carefully, and you can set that aside somewhere where it's not going to get smashed or bumped. So when you see cut it off, you're going to see the newspaper inside. That's the newspaper that we had put in there to support it. So when you go to take that newspaper out, go ahead and hold your hand here carefully and squeeze down the newspaper and then give it a twist to release it because it'll want to stick where we cross hatch and slip. And then just carefully squeeze it down and pull it out. If you need to, you can tear it out in small bits, but try to just um, squeeze it down first of all. You can throw that away. We don't need that anymore. So I'm going to try and hold this up. I went a little bit too thin on my pinch pots. You can see that they're a little less than a quarter of an inch. It's not going to hurt it any. It just means that it's going to be a little bit thin up near the top, and I'll have to be careful as I work with it. So I'm going to try and hold it at an angle and hope that you can see inside. You can see where the slip kind of oozed where we joined it. So the first thing we want to do is smooth out that seam. So what you can do to help smooth that out is if you have one of the kits that, of the um, pottery tools, um, you can go ahead and use what looks like a wooden knife. And it's got this rounded end on the back. It looks like a tongue depressor. And what you'll do is basically hold that inside and just use it to scrape or to smear 
where your seam is. And that's going to help reinforce and smooth out the inside, reinforce that join, that seam from the inside. If you're at home and you didn't get the pottery tools, um, you didn't invest in them, you could use the backside of a spoon. It's the same thing. You're going to press in and smooth it. Just make sure as you press in, you're careful to support it on the outside. And I'm going to do it this way. I don't think there's any way I can hold it to the camera here to show you. But I'm just going to go inside here carefully and I'm just going to go along and smooth that seam out and blend that in. As I do it, I'm going to be careful not to hit the edge because I don't want to nick the edge or the rim of the uh, pot so that I don't put a ding in it or mess it up or change the shape of it. I want to make sure that this stays the same size so that my lid is going to fit back on. So I'm just going to hold it here and I'm going to go along and I'm just going to smooth it little by little, trying to blend that seam together and just make it look neat and clean inside. Um, believe it or not, whenever people pick up your work, especially if it has a lid, they want to take it, the lid off, they want to look inside, they want to examine what you've made. So the neater and cleaner you can make the inside look, just the nicer and more finished your project will look. Some people don't care about the inside um, in terms of their work and they won't really clean it up, but as I'm looking at your projects and I'm grading them, um, I like to see inside. I like to hold them, feel the weight of them. I like to see how clean and neat the inside is as compared to the outside. I just want to see and know that you took all those little extra steps to really make it finished, make it look nice. I know from a distance you guys are taking photos of your work and if I can, if I have my druthers, you'll take a photo of the inside with the lid off as well when you submit it to me. So keep that in mind. So after you've used the tool to smooth out as much as you can on the inside, if there's any little fragments, you can shake them out of there. And then before you cut out the face, I would take a sponge if possible and try and put the sponge inside and smooth that out. So I'm going to hold it here sideways and I'm going to be careful not to bump the rim, but I'm just going to put that inside and I'm going to smooth over where I just was blending together that seam. And you have to be careful because you don't want to bump the rim, you don't want to change the shape, um, but you do want to try and just clean it up and make it look as nice as you can inside. And I'll probably go back and do this some more after I finish the video. Um, because I'm quite particular. I like to finish everything off, make it look as best as I can. Um, but since I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter, um, so I don't take up as much of your time, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop at this point. Now the other thing that I will also do is on the underside of the lid, you can see sometimes it's a little cracky and scraggly. Um, that's from where you've paddled and compressed the clay. I'll also go back with the sponge and I'll go ahead and I'll sponge and I'll smooth out all those little cracks and bumps and uneven places. And I'll also sponge a little bit on the rim itself just to clean things up to make it nice and rounded and smooth um, so it just looks that much better and that much more finished. And I will go around, you can see when you cut it, it kind of raises the, uh, a little ridge here. I will lightly sponge that as well. Don't need to sponge it a lot because you don't want to remove too much of the clay, but do sponge it a little bit to smooth it out, to clean it up so it's going to look more finished. So at this point I'm going to set this aside and now we're going to work on doing the face. And again, we're just going to hold it carefully and we're going to take our knife and you can pick whether you want to start on the eyes, you want to start on the nose, um, wherever, the mouth and you're just going to go ahead and insert your knife and then go ahead and try to drag it as nice and neat and clean as you can. Be careful not to like go too fast because sometimes the clay will be a little harder in spots, sometimes a little softer in others and if you accidentally go too hard and you hit a soft spot all of a sudden your knife will just like 
slide past where you intended to stop and you'll cut too much of it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and go slowly. And again, trying to drag it as much as I can. Pull the knife out, reinsert it, drag it. Sometimes you get areas that you don't need to drag. It's a small area and you just kind of insert it and you can make your cut. Um, and then from the inside, just try to push that out and wiggle that piece out. And you can go ahead and make your cut. So I would go through and I would cut everything out. Then I go back with my sponge. And I sponge away from the cut. And when you sponge away from the cut, it takes those little scraggly bits away from going down inside the cut and it rounds off that edge just a little bit and softens it and it makes it look neater and cleaner and what you'll find is when you get these fired and you go to glaze them a rounded edge is going to let the glaze stick on there and look neater um, if it's a sharp harsh edge as the glaze melts it will break off that edge in other words it melts away from the edge and you'll see more of the raw clay coming through some people like that effect some people um, like a more soft rounder look so what I find is if you go ahead and you sponge that it just gives it a neater cleaner look and it helps in the glazing for the glaze to stick there on that edge now the next thing I would do is take either the tip of a pencil or in this case a needle tool and you're going to do what's called burnishing and burnishing basically is just rubbing or compressing against an edge or a cut that you've made and it will clean it up so I'm going to try and hold this here a little bit closer so I take the needle tool and what I do is I go in where I've made my cut and I just rub along that edge and what it'll do is just compress that edge and smooth it out sometimes you'll get little bits of clay that will stick on the needle tool just clean them off because when you make your cuts, a lot of times you'll see little scraggly bits down inside. Take the needle tool and rub along there and smooth those out. It's going to make it look that much neater, that much cleaner, especially in the corners of cuts. And again, keep cleaning your needle tool off because the clay will want to stick to it. And that's just going to finish off your cuts and make them look super neat, super clean, super nice. Now if you can, after you've cut it, go back inside because I don't know if the video will show it but you'll see down inside when you make that cut it raises a little ridge there sometimes little scraggly stick in there on the back side and when you put the candle inside and it's shining you'll see those scragglies come through when you're looking at it from the front because you'll see the silhouette of it so if you can take your sponge and go back inside there and lightly sponge the back side of your cuts that will clean it up and it'll make it look that much neater and that much nicer that much more professional and that much better finished. So all those things are the little things that you want to do to really finish off your project and to make it look as neat and as clean and as professional as you can get it. Um, so what I'll do at this point is I will go ahead and continue cutting out my face um, and then I will go back over it, sponge, smooth, clean up everything that I possibly can and then I will put my lid back on it and I will let it hang out and dry the rest of the way. Now, since this is distance learning and we're doing this from a distance, if you want to keep your project till we're able to come back to in-person teaching, then you can store it somewhere and let it dry up and just be really careful as you handle it so that it doesn't um, break on you. Um, if it bumps into something or tips into something, it's like a piece of chalk. It will break very easily once it's bone dry. Um, and you always want to be careful that you keep your hand on top of the lid when you move it so the lid doesn't come off. Now if you decide that you're not going to keep yours, you don't care about holding on to it um, for when we come back in person for it to be fired, then what you can do is take several pictures of it, take a front view, a side view, take the lid off, take a picture down inside for me so that I get a couple different views of it and then you'll submit that for your grade. After that, what you can do is basically um, tear it up in pieces or just throw it in your bag, flood it with a bunch of water, spray water on it, let it soak in, and your clay will get soft enough that you can recycle it again. Okay, um, so again, anytime you're moving it, storing it, putting it away, keep your hand on top of the lid. Um, I've seen people over and over in class 
that will be so proud of what they're doing and they'll want to show their friends. They go to show them and they take their hand off and they forget and they tilt it. The lid falls off, boom, on the tabletop or the floor and it makes a big dent and it changes the shape and then the lid never can get fixed to line up again. So always either take the lid off as you're moving it or make sure you are keeping your hand on top of the lid. Same thing if you flip it over to sign your name and the period on the bottom. Always keep your hand on top or take the lid off when you turn it over so that your lid doesn't fall off and it doesn't get damaged. So I'm going to continue working on this um, and finish it up and I'll come back hopefully and give you a short little video of the finished pumpkin so you can see um, how smooth and neat and clean it should look when you finish it. Okay, um, so that's the next step and have fun carving your pumpkin. See you next time.